Likes um, likes the view. So as you can see, a child seat does fit in there. I'm gonna need two hands on her to get you up there. <laughs> what do you think? Feet up. You're a bit close to the front there, aren't you? Get mucky, mucky feet marks on the uh, on the back of the seat. So it does fit in. You can't move that seat back anymore because obviously the bed's in the way. And then, uh, yeah, you do. Well, can I fit in if I was a passenger? Yeah, you can fit in, but you don't have as much leg room with a car seat behind you, obviously. So it's a little bit limiting, but not too bad. Ready to go? Ready to go? Ready to go? Now Harvey does like it when he's inside. He thinks it's great. He's got such a good view that like the windows all around. He just seems to have a really good view, don't you? Yeah, what are you telling us? Happy? You like it? No, <laughs> you're shaking your head. You do like it, yeah you do. Right, we're going shopping. Shopping? Now I'm sure there must be a way, but whenever you start the vehicle up, it defaults back to like show me the um, range uh, in miles of what I've got left in the fuel tank of how much fuel I've got. Now I like to have the setting on a big speedo. I'd like to be able to have a big digital speedo, but you have to change that every time. Even though I'm using the same key, I have to change that back every time. And not only that, but it but it also defaults to some weird like route suggestion on the big screen as well i want it on the map so i change it on change it to the map every time but every time i get back in again and start the car it's back to how it was back to this like suggested destination which at the minute is vw uk press office so not sure how to change the default on that now having owned quite a few automatics another strange thing is that if you park up and press the park button park the car, lock it and leave, it automatically puts the handbrake on. Now I know that can often happen with vehicles, but you have to manually remove that, it seems. I can't seem to, if I just try and, oh no you don't, no, I'll take that back. <laughs> you can just drive through it. I thought you'd, you have to basically just put a bit of throttle on and power through the handbrake and it does disengage. So that's one thing that is better than I first thought. So we've just driven into Southampton, which is one of the worst places to drive into for efficiency because um, there's so many traffic lights, there's loads. I must go through about 20 sets of traffic lights just to get in and they're nearly always on red. But um, we averaged 31.3 miles per gallon on the way in. It often shuts down to just two cylinder mode as well, which is quite interesting. But uh, time for a bit of shopping. Nineteen. 
Are you helping? Are you going to put them in for me? Like, no chance. Well, everything is in. <laughs> and it's obviously not much, but when you're carrying this around with you and a bed, it's not the most practical if you just want to do some daily chores. But, never mind. Right, well, with the trip computer reset, I'm going to go back the motorway direction to see if the economy's better when we go along the motorway on a longer journey less stop start so let's see how we get on so just got back and although it says 37.4 mpg on here obviously done a little bit of town driving once we got off the motorway on the motorway it's saying just over 38 so the engine's still very very new uh, so i'd expect about 40 miles per gallon that's doing 70 mile an hour so if you went a little bit slower you'd probably get quite a bit more but yeah not too bad i suppose morning we did some shopping in Southampton and then we've just come across well Harvey's had his lunch and a nap at home and then we've come across to Portsmouth actually just to have a coffee at Broadway Coffee Roasters if you're ever in Portsmouth come here they do the best coffee it is so so good but uh, yeah one thing that I did notice that was really weird is I noticed in Southampton when we drove past the Sayat dealership interestingly it showed the Sayat dealership on the map and I thought that's just because it probably shows all uh, Volkswagen Audi group places but as we come into Portsmouth there is a Seat dealership near an Audi dealership and a VW dealership and it only shows the Seat one on the uh, on the map so I'm starting to think it's got a, a Seat um, sat nav in it because <laughs> it doesn't show the VW ones <laughs> even though they're right next door a bit unusual Interestingly, I just parked the Caddy right next to our California because I think one of the reasons why you would go for the Caddy California is because you need a smaller vehicle, you've not got the space to store a normal size color California. But um, interestingly, when they're here, they seem almost exactly the same size. Obviously, not as tall as a standard California but um, yeah if I swing round here gosh yeah even the length I would say the length it must only be a few centimeters in it so and, and this is this is not a long wheelbase one this is a short wheelbase caddy California interesting obviously one other reason why you'd go for a caddy over a, uh, a normal California is price you know they're a lot cheaper this comes in at in the 30,000 pound region, well, late 30,000s. Um, whereas, yeah, as we all know, normal Californias are 50, 60, 70 plus. But yeah, I just thought it was quite interesting because the Caddy California is definitely uh, fairly similar to a California beach. You know, it doesn't have a, a beach anyway with the kitchen like we've got you're not really benefiting massively from having a much smaller vehicle because it's not really that much smaller but you do lose a lot of space inside so after our trip today we have a few bits in the back here and really not a lot of bits in the back we've pretty much well we've really filled this up whereas in the back of a, a california beach you've, you still have tons of space because you've got that double that split um kind of parcel shelf area with a boot underneath it so for me i'm not entirely sure it's the most practical vehicle to use as a daily vehicle and having looked at someone asked if you can remove the actual um the bed frame in fact let me go around the other side 
So let's just drop this down again. Didn't learn from last time, did I? So you can see there, it looks like, yes, you probably can remove it. I'm not entirely sure if it's the quickest thing to do, quickest job. Plus as well, where on earth are you going to store something that big? That's massive. You need to have a garage to put that in really. But that would make it a much more practical vehicle uh, when you're not using it as a camper van, definitely. So maybe that is worth doing. But I would say that's a two man job and I'm not gonna try and tackle it today. Right, well that's it for today's video. Uh, I'm doing more videos throughout the week so make sure if you've got any questions at all, you wanna know anything about the Caddy California, please pop them in the, in the comments below and I shall try and answer it for you. I've now got to build this IKEA furniture. Lucky me. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and I shall see you in the next video. Cheers.